Hey guys, today we're going to be telling you some of the fakest couples to have ever featured on the reality show 90 Day Fiancé. Even sadder than the ones who see it coming are the ones who don't. Old men oblivious to why the love of their life keeps asking them to bring suitcases full of panties or asking about their finances are even more shocked when the life leaves after the wedding. So in at number 5 we have Matt and Alla. The relationship seemed somewhat genuine at first. Matt and Alla's relationship quickly fell apart into the green card grabbing scheme it had always been shortly after they were married. Alla has openly come out and said that she doesn't love Matt citing that she got married to get him out of her own country and into the States. Now it's sad too, because Matt isn't an ugly dude. He may be a bit older, but he did turn down a lap dance at his bachelor party. Although we wouldn't want to mess up our Indiana Jones hat with whatever nastiness that stripper was carrying in that bikini either. The constant pestering from Matt's family didn't help the relationship in the least, essentially driving Alla to reveal her true intentions after the wedding was all said and done. Just shut your mouth, seriously. Why? I'm asking a serious question. I mean, this no, is... you're being rude. It's not the way that you're, you're making it out. In at number four, we have the doomed relationship between Chantel and Pedro. Again, this one seemed real when it first started and was one of the relationships that had the best chances of having a happy ending. The two are in the same age group, she speaks his language, and they could stand each other for longer than 15 minutes. The future looked really bright for Chantel and Pedro. Then, Chantel and Pedro had to move the bed into the kitchen, and it all went to hell. Pedro's main focus in the relationship was never Chantel. It was sending money back to his mother and sister still living in the Dominican Republic. It all came to a boil when they had their wedding at a resort in the Dominican Republic, leading to Chantel and the women of Pedro's family to get in a heated debate in the lobby. They got married anyway, much to the disdain of both families, leaving the mystery of Pedro's sister being his actual wife to remain a conversation best had over a plate of chicken's feet. Yes, you are. It's okay, it's Nicole, good. if you're lying. It's okay. Okay, no. okay, okay excuse I me. Know. Okay, you can move the chair. You can put... No, your... she's no, not going no, to. Not. She's going to sit there. And at number three, we have the craziest, most abusive couple to have ever graced the show. Evelyn and David. A side note before we start, these two are extremely awful human beings. Evelyn's entire reality consists of a dying small American town where she's a musical superstar, despite sounding like a bag of cats in a washing machine when she sings. David, on the other hand, is a condescending scab who's quickly realizing that proposing to Evelyn may be the worst mistake he's ever made in his life. Their relationship was lovely online and long distance simply because they never had to be around each other. Now that they spend all their time together, they are quickly realising that they do not like each other in the slightest. Considering that one of their main attractions to each other was religious beliefs, it seems unlikely that they will separate in the engagement period even if they can't stand being in each other's presence. I'm like leaving my country, leaving my family, leaving my friends, and you don't seem to like want to give up anything. Up next is the disturbing story between Paul and Kareem. This one is alarming because we don't think Kareem knows that she's marrying a serial killer. Paul is a really weird dude with severe psychological problems and a criminal record, who ran, like a penguin, into the jungle once she found out about his past and threatened to throw himself into a river. The man puts up more red flags than the parade, and Kareen just follows along, speaking to him through his translator app. If you guys don't speak the same language, getting married might not be the best decision. Also, Kareen pretty much called it off only to have Paul show up at her door begging her to take him back. She reluctantly accepted, and as far as we know, she hasn't been heard from since. We're guessing she's in one of Paul's six travel cargo containers that most likely contains the bodies of his other girlfriends. I don't speak a language here, and you know, I don't understand what's going on. You know, obviously this is really not good, and things are just going way downhill. And lastly, the main reason that everyone watches 90 Day Fiancé, George and Amphissa. This relationship is one of the fakest, and entertaining, that has ever occurred in the history of the series. And Fissa, an ex-webcam girl with a heart of coal, is perpetually mad that George isn't as rich as he let on during their online relationship. This one was pretty much doomed from the start, as Amphissa kicks George out of the apartment on a near constant basis or explodes into violence, accosting him on the spot. Now are the beatings justified? Considering that George told her that he was stuffed to the double chin with cash to get her over to the States, yes, they probably are. The two now have a spin-off series in their future, leading to a bizarre cycle of constantly breaking up and getting back together to keep the drama gravy flowing, signifying that the relationship has achieved levels of phoniness previously unknown in the reality television world. 
I want more shoes, more bags, more. I want a car. There has to be a limit. 10,000 per month? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Then I guess we don't get to Be reasonable. 